I've recently talked about how mainstream seems to be getting more comfortable with the idea of throwing out some pretty big ideas in cosmology and physics, like the Big Bang, like general relativity. And now you're seeing that people are saying, wait a minute, maybe it isn't dark matter, but it's light. But I will tell you right now, stay tuned. We're going to go through this article because I want to point out to you why and where these problems are in this article. And even though they, it's another one of those articles where, yeah, we'll throw something away, but then they still get things wrong because they're not hanging out with the, the movers and the shakers in the critical world like we have in the CMPS and the, in our databases and the people we know. They should, because the answer is really simple. You don't need dark matter at all. The current laws of the, of the current laws or the things, the our force of gravity that we know can easily explain what's going on. You don't need anything invented, but of course that's what they want to do. Why? Because if you invent dark matter, and you explain it, or you explain what's going on because of dark matter or by, in some other way, you're going to win a Nobel Prize. You're certainly not going to do that if you have a completely new model of the universe, which is sad, but maybe someday. Who knows? Let's go forward and, and read this article because that's what I'm here for, is to show and point out how you can read these articles and read between the lines. We've been looking for decades for dark matter, yet the mysterious stuff remains undetectable to our instruments. Now astrophysicists have explored an intriguing possibility. What if it's not dark matter that's affecting galactic rotation at all? What if it's the mass of light instead? Okay, I've got my phone here, which has all of human knowledge on it, which is pretty amazing, right? I mean, you got a phone and it has everything on it. Uh, and it says, I asked, do photons have ma mass? Light is composed of photons. So we could ask if a photon has mass. The answer then is definitely no. The, the photon is a massless particle. So obviously these astrophysicists are talking about the mass of light. So that's going against mainstream. So now they're saying no dark matter. Oh, and then mass, light has mass. That goes against mainstream as well. And so they're calling the photon. But let's, they're giving a little history lesson now. Here, here, here's the history, history lesson on dark matter. In a 1980 paper, the American astronomer Vera Rubin pretty conclusively proved something really weird about galaxies. Their rims are rotating far faster than they should be. As we move out, out from the galactic center, the orbital motion of the stars and gas in the disk should theoretically slow down with a decrease in velocity proportional to the distance from the center. This is called uh, Keplerian decline or a decreasing rotational uh, rotation curve. And it, should, it, it can be observed quite nice, neatly in planetary systems like our solar system, but most galaxies—excuse me—most <laughs> galaxies don't actually do this. Instead, their rotational curves either f remain flat or actually increase. Those outer galaxy, uh, those outer stars, are already much more quickly than they should be, based on the gravitational effect of the matter we can observe. So physicists hypothesize dark matter. Of course, here's here's the problem always in physics. From the, from the time of Einstein, Einstein started, he, he uh, invented the laws of the universe, can't go faster than the speed of light, all, all, um, all physics has to be the same inertial frames. He really invented inertial frames in the sense of the way he did, and you get all these crazy things by, you know, like time slowing down, mass increasing, length, inc length contracting, and then, of course, they go on to invent neutrinos, W and Z particles, uh, quarks, and now the Higgs boson, they keep inventing, and we can pretty much throw away all those inventions out, including perhaps dark matter. Yes, we can. And I, I'm going to tell you why. Stay tuned. Why, why we do... Well, <laughs> let's try reading that again. We don't know what it is, and we can't detect it directly, talking about dark matter. But unless all of our current understanding about the physical universe and all the data we collected on the phenomenon is wrong, something out there is definitely making extra gravity. No. The answer is no. Nothing's wrong. Um, what we know about the universe isn't wrong. It's how we're applying it that's wrong. And we'll get to that. Uh, but that's something might not be dark matter, according to a team of re researchers, specifically plasma physicists. Uh, Dimitri from Lawrence Liver Mat Laboratory uh, in California. Uh, an another Dimitri, uh, Victor Jonas, I'm not going to read the last names, uh, from the University of uh, Gutenberg University of Maine's of Mainz, Germany. In a new paper, they laid out an argument that light particles, photons, 
are at least partially the source of the phenomenon, causing an effect that isn't gravity, but behaves a heck of a lot like it. Again, they are going way against mainstream. Besides not saying that, it's, besides they're saying that there's no uh, no dark matter, they're saying photons have light, and they even they even say more than that. The hypothetical effect we are investigating is not the result of increased gravity, but assuming that a certain photon mass much smaller than the current upper limit. Um, but mainstream science says photon doesn't have mass. Well, I guess these guys are sort of like dissident scientists. They are like coming up with their own idea of how the world universe works. So in my opinion, they are critical thinkers, dissident scientists, and uh, can be really looked upon by not as, as mainstream. But assuming, okay, uh, so it's saying, but assuming a certain photon mass much smaller than the upper limit, as I read, we can show that this mass would be sufficient to generate additional forces in the galaxy and that the, these forces would be roughly large enough to explain the rotational curves. The conclusion is extremely exciting. Of course it is. They want to win something. <laughs> the effect they describe is sort of a negative pressure caused by electromagnetic stresses related to the photon mass. Oh, there are electromagnetic stresses, stresses related to the photon mass? Whoa, that's new. Again, now we have a photon with mass and it's got electromagnetic stresses. Pretty cool. At least these guys are trying something new, but they don't need to. The answer of all is Occam, Occam's razor. What's that is? The simplest explanation should win. And the simplest explanation is use the same laws we already have or the same rules of the universe or the same equations that we have. Better say that. Same equations we have in the universe, not have to do anything special. But yes, use them and apply them correctly. That's all we're doing wrong. When placed in the context of a mathematical system called the Max Broca electrodynamics, these electromagnetic stresses can generate additional centripetal forces acting predominantly on interstellar gas. These, uh, the team calls this Broca stress, and it acts a lot like gravity. So yes, it's purely hypothetical at this point, and it's not perfect. On the other hand, short-lived stars are born from gas and rapidly turn from gas to com uh, uh, before completing one orbit around the galaxy they're talking about, uh, would be strongly coupled with gas. The Proca stresses acting on this gas would be, would be indirectly also acting on the stars. But longer-lived stars create a problem. The Sun, for example, is about 4.6 billion years old and the orbits, orbits the galactic center every 230 million years. So it's hard, it's it's had a few turns out, uh, turns on the round, on the roundabout. I, I guess this is written from British English, um, because they did say uh, something spelled center with R-E. According to the team's calculations, it should have a highly elliptical orbit under Proca stresses. So they're saying that the sun really sort of violates this whole idea of light and its electromagnetic effects. And yes, it does not. And yet it does not. That means what they described, uh, it's, it's supposed to be the, the that those stresses, what are they called? I'm sorry. Proca stresses, and yet it does not, so it doesn't work with our sun, so the theory would need a bit of work to be compatible with our actual observation of the universe, you think. <laughs> For now, dark matter is still king. But there's no harm, and potentially a lot of good in looking for other explanations too. There certainly is, and we already have them. We solved it. Two people actually solved it very nicely from our group, and to me, they just throw it out. You don't need it. Uh, we don't currently consider photon mass to be a solution to the rotational curve problem, but it could be part of the solution, Buchner said. However, we need to keep an open mind as long as we do not actually know what dark matter is. Well, the answer to the question is, we have to keep an open mind, so you need to change this. If they were critical thinkers and they hung out with the best critical thinkers in the world, which aren't from Lawrence Livermore uh, Laboratory or from necessarily that university in Germany, we maybe have to change the sentence. It says, however, we, the sentence now says, we need to keep an open mind as long as we do not actually know what dark matter is. However, we need to keep an open mind, as we should say, as long as we don't actually know what dark matter is or that if you need it at all, which is in there in lies the answer. And of course we have the answer and I have two videos about that. And if you look up here, right up here, um, you'll see a video. Uh, and that video I've already uh, made about this, which you can use. And Newton applied correctly with galaxies means you don't need dark matter. In other words, if you apply Newton's gravity 
to the ununiform, non-uniform gravitational field of the galaxy than the stars on the edge. You can see right here in this diagram from Cameron Ribbixall, his paper, and uh, the paper is, uh, is linked below, and of course that video has it. This says all arms of the, cro uh, of the cross consist of loose materials. So what he's saying is, galaxies have arms. And so therefore, the gravitational field isn't one that's Keplerian uh, de decrease. The reason, the reason these stars are moving this way is because you have a very strange set, uh, you, you have a non-uniform gravitational field. And he goes through very complicated calculations. And again, take a look at that video I pointed. It's also down below in the, uh, down below in the, the description area. And I talk all about it. So the answer is, is he looks at the galaxy as arms and those arms are not uniform. They're sort of like a cross going around or a, a, you can see here, he's taking the cross and baking it into boxes and he makes calculations with this and finds out, well, guess what? The stars on the edges are gonna move faster than they're supposed to be according to the Keplerian decrease. And then there's even another one, which I think is even easier to see. And that's um, the uh, 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 gravity versus the constant G. I can't remember exactly what the name of the, the paper is but my father. Anyways, it's right here. Take a look at that. I did a video on my father's paper, and this graph is absolutely phenomenal, and my dad talks about this. In fact, I can't put a link up here because YouTube doesn't let me put any links to other people's stuff like that. So you can go to mine, which talks about it, or you can go down below, pointing right down below, and see my dad's... Um, talk about it because I'll put that down there as well. And I'll put the talk about, uh, in fact, about uh, uh, Cameron's talk as well. So you're gonna get the, my talks about their work and them talking about their work. But let's take a look right here. And I'm sorry repeating this, but the people who are new to the channel, uh, go back and see it because it's seminal. These are seminal works. The answer of dark matter is you don't need it. It was invented because we would like to invent stuff because if you find it or pretend to find it, you win prizes. You don't win prizes for coming to the conclusion you don't need dark matter. Uh, well, maybe you should, but there's that, that curve right there, that blue curve. Now that blue curve are the velocities of the stars as you get away from the center of the galaxy. Do you notice anything in that curve? My father did, and that is you can see where the arms are in the galaxy. And that the velocities, when there's space, and there's, then there's more mass because of the arms of the galaxy, changes the speeds. So basically, a galaxy is a non-uniform gravitational field. It's pretty complicated, actually. Uh, that's why Cameron breaks it down into sort of a cross. He first does a, just a, a rectangular bar, and then he makes a cross, and then he takes that cross and sort of he try. He's what he's doing is he's applying gravity to, in, in a way that he that he sees that's not uniform. If you don't believe it's uniform, you tell me. If I send a probe to the center of the of the galaxy, and I'm going to go through. Um, lots of stars, I'm going to pass, for instance, in between arms, and then I get closer to the arms. Do you think that probe's going to be uh, curving? You bet it is. It's not far enough away that it won't be affected. Of course, stars are around, are, are, are swirling around each other. There's gravity for the whole darn galaxy. So if you, stand, if you believe you, if you send a probe to the middle of the galaxy and you're going through arms and there are going to be more stars, sometimes closer to it and less stars, it ain't going to go in a straight line. If it's not in a straight line, it means what? It's a non-uniform gravitational field. So in this um, diagram, my father says, look at that. The, the velocities have to do with where they where those arms are, and those arms create uh, gravitational forces that are different so, than when you are in the space between arms. And there's that Kep Keplerian orbits, and that's just this other this line right there. That line right there is a treating a galaxy as a sphere. 
It's not a sphere, folks. I don't think there's anybody listening to me today that, that doesn't recognize that the gravitational field around a galaxy is non-uniform and the Keplerian. So what is happening in mainstream science? All of these brilliant scientists haven't thought of that the there is a non-uniform gravitational field in galaxies? That's the answer. No offense, that doesn't really bode too well for them, huh? Uh, anyways, let's take a look at another one. This is both from my pa the paper. So I'm going to have a lot of links down here. Down uh, down here, I'm going to have links to uh, the video, my videos about these uh, two men's work, my father's and uh, Cameron's. Uh, also, I'm going to put videos down, them talking about their work, uh, which are both seminal works, in my opinion. And I'm also going to put down uh, their papers that they put into our proceedings uh, about these works. In my opinion, these works are the best works in the world world on dark matter but that's not what they are let's reword that the truth is they are the best wor uh, the best works in the world on describing the what com what people say are anomalous velocities at the edge of galaxies they're not anomalous newton to the rescue whoop de doo now i want you to take a look at this one right here again this is actually plotted by mainstream scientists, astronomers, philosophy of stars from the from Ohio State, my alma mater. Dun, 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 dun. All right, and do you notice those little uh, circles there? There you can see it. Can you see the arms in the spaces of the galaxy again? Of the arms of the galaxy, there they are, and there's Keplerian prediction. You see it again. That's a curve. It's going. Woo, woo. Yeah, go through a galaxy. You go, oh, arm of, no arm, arm, no arm, arm. And with that, you can describe everything. So let's go back to this one uh, part of the article. Instead of the rotating curves either remain flat or actually increase, the outer stars are already much more quickly than they should be based on the gravitational effect of matter we can observe. Yes, that's absolutely right. It's the matter we can observe, but, the, but what they do is they treat it as the Keplerian de decline. That's the problem. So, ast so astrophysicists hypothesis dark matter. They just didn't think to think, well, maybe we got to, because why? Because the model of gravity that we use in general relativity as well does everything as point masses. Everything's a point mass. You put a point in the middle of the galaxy, you calculate its mass, and then you do a, as if it's a sphere, the, ga the gravity goes out. No! There's gravity. If you go next to a sun, it's gonna, your, your, your probe's gonna go a around. If, if it was a, a gravitational field, was equal, well, then uh, you shoot a, a probe, it should go right to the center. It shouldn't be veering off, it does. And models, newer models, like my father's model, uh, well, it's our model as well, my model as well, because we've, we've both contributed now, uh, the particle model. Well, gravity is, gravity is the result in our model of random particles flying in random directions. And when you have mass in the way, you got more pressure on the outside. So that means one of the things about my father's work very early on was he was working with non-uniform gravitational fields and that's there lies in the problem so this article says what if dark matter what if it's not dark matter making the universe's extra gravity but light no there is no extra gravity that's a silly idea gravity is gravity it's just this thing right here isn't uniform there's a bunch of arms in there. It's non-uniform. So you get the idea. All right, that's why I'm your science therapist. Uh, you got it. Anyways, remember what I always say, stay critical, stay thinking. I'm David D. Hilster. I'm your science therapist. Trying to get you the promised land of being science woke. Ciao for now.